from the moment we put the boat in the water, I realized we were not in Kansas anymore. I mean, literally, I'm watching boats zip through the lake, jet skis everywhere. I'm thinking, what are we doing? This is urban fishing at its finest. The story of meeting with Johnny was really through a mutual friend, uh, pro staffer through Shimano. And they've known each other for a couple years. And uh, when he got finished fishing with Johnny, he called me and said, Jay, if you get the opportunity, you need to head south and fish with this guy. and You'll absolutely have a ball. You know, I've never done this before. And to be in waters that I know, those yeah. peacocks and yeah. those knives live, yep. I'm super pumped. And, you know, we have a connection through Ben Powers, a Shimano Pro. Yes, we do. And he says, Jay, you got to come fish with this guy. So <laughs> I know we talked about it for a while, and yeah, yeah. here we are. Uh, the old Maverick loving this fresh, uh, this is a sweet water, they call it, right? Oh, oh yeah, the Maverick's loving this water. For years, I've known that these, you know, peacock bass and these clown knives were here in Florida, uh, but I never really had the, you know, the time nor the opportunity to head south and target those. Nor did I really want to just like just pack the boat up and just kind of go drop the boat in on just a whim. Uh, so having any connection you can, you know, make in the fishing industry, you know, in this case is a perfect case scenario because literally. The guy is completely dialed in to his program, and I knew it was a great opportunity for me to try to take off a couple bucket list fish. You see how it dropped off here yeah, to I about seven feet? Um, they're gonna, the clowns kind of sit right in this little channel that we have here, and then they go up on the flat behind us to feed on the spawning shad. And, uh, and they're gonna spawn themselves. So they're, yeah. they're in here just kind of living and spawning and they go up to feed on the flat and they come right back down and they kind of just live right in this little area. So well, I see little dimples of shad. I would assume that's what that is, right? Yep, they're chasing the shad right now. So, uh, and anytime, like, like I said, you see a roll, um, nine times out of 10, it's a clown knife. Roll like a tarpon. They roll just like a tarpon do. They gulf air just like a tarpon does. And I think that's how they've been able to live in you know, a lake that probably doesn't have the best water quality around. Yeah, and it's almost 90 degree water temp. And it's, it'll be <laughs> 91 by the end of the day today. Amazing. Yep. All right. You're putting salt in the well in yeah. a freshwater lake? That's it. That's the I don't get it. That's the only way to keep it. So this is water softener salt. So it's just going to harden the scales on the bait and um, essentially just help the bait live a lot longer um, in the well, because if not, they would die very quickly. Really? Yep. It's pretty clever. Yeah. Is Took that... a long time to figure that <laughs> out. <laughs> there was a definite clown roll right off that dock there. Okay. Definite clown roll. They are in the zone. We're here. Got a little breakfast for him. Yeah. Let let him have it. Let him have it. Let him have it. He's pulling dirt line out. All right. Light hook set. Here's your fish. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, absolutely smoking. He is probably gonna oh. jump. <laughs> I saw it coming. Yeah, I did too. Oh boy. Just finesse him. Yeah. Just finesse him. Feel like I'm a smallmouth bass fishing here. Oh my goodness. It's a good That's one. a huge one. That's a good one. Huge one. Come on, come on. Come on this side. Oh baby. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh they don't like they don't like the net. Let, let's just let them. Yeah, yeah. Do you see him swimming backwards like yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, Come on. Hey. Don't be doing that craziness. Oh, oh, oh. Hang on. I rotate him right to you. There we yes. go. <laughs> Dude. You said, hey, let's just give this another 20 minutes. I get impatient sometimes. Good night. You'll listen. Hold, hold this fix really quick. 
they, Dude. they drum just like redfish do. So you, you'll, you'll feel them drumming there. Let me get my fingers out. Gotcha. Uh, he's hooked right in the top of the mouth there. Well, oh, look at that joker. That's look it. at his fins. That is crazy. The clown knife, uh, in photos, it's an impressive fish in itself. But until you have it in your hands and watch its tail and kind of articulating through its body, there's nothing like that. And to see all the spots, the tiny little scales on its face, uh, its eyeballs are relatively small, but really close to each other. So it's clear they're on a, a feed on, you know, they're always looking up at life, I suppose. Well done. I mean, not bad for a first clown, huh? That is not a bad first clown knife I mean, fish right here on the Maverick, Lake Ida, Florida, or Lake Ida in Palm Beach, Florida. Look at how small his head is to his body. That's crazy. Hold, hold him straight up and down, watch him. He, Got that constantly moved. Check that out. All right, so we're going to get a quick weight on this fish. Uh, I said, what, seven pounds? Yeah. We're 634. Very cool. Very All respectable right. for a clown knife fish. So we'll right, I'll take the scale from you there. Take that off. We're gonna get a quick measurement. And we're doing this because we're gonna actually tag this fish. All right, uh, I'm, at, I'm at zero here. 28 and a half inches. All right. And we're gonna stick a tag in this fish really quick and send her on her way home. There we go. So we just tagged this fish um, so that we can track where it goes. Um, this fish can go yeah. anywhere from 20 to 25 miles north of us um, on the chain of lakes and canals that we have here. Right. So we're just doing this for research to see where they move. These fish like to swim a lot. And um, I'm gonna let her go. Love it. Back in 1992, we had Hurricane Andrew that hit Miami, and all of South Florida suffered power loss and you know effects from Hurricane Andrew. So during that time, everybody that had a fish tank basically dumped their fish tank in the lake because they didn't want their fish to die, and the clown knives stuck. And now there are game fish here. As we're moving through these canals, you know, we go under a couple bridges and then the canal tightens up quite a bit. And I'm going through here and all I can look and see is I got people getting their grass cut, I got leaf blowers, I got dogs barking at us, and Johnny's telling me to look to the left. So I get on the casting platform and I'm looking over and I see three peacock bass all sitting together and they look pretty hungry to me. So we, we stopped, we power pulled down, made a couple casts, and it started to work for us. The peacocks will swim up and down these walls trying to ambush their prey. So we're gonna, you know, we're just casting our baits. There we go. Oh, there's oh yeah. There's one. Oh, man. Nice peacock, too. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah! Dude, first peacock on the Maverick. All right. Look how cool that one is. That one's got some real pretty colors. Let's uh, get the hook out of her. Oh yeah. Just, they're very resilient. It's pretty spunky for that guy. Very spunky. So this is a female. This is a big breeder female. Yeah, Man, look nice at the colors on that joker. Beautiful colors. It's a beautiful fish. That is awesome. Probably two, three pounds. Yeah. All day long I take that. All day long. And they fight just like 
20 inch redfish or better do. <laughs> well done. Thanks, sir. <laughs> okay. Oh. You're on? There you go. Yep, I am. That's a good one, too. Real nice one. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Get away from that dock. Oh, man, that's a big one. That's that big one that we saw earlier. Oh, boy, it is a good one. It's a good one. Real good one. Oh, yeah, big old male. It's got, got the big yeah, old hump. Not on its head. Big old hump head. <laughs> there we yeah, go. Yeah. Jay's on the board. Oh, yeah. First thing I noticed about that peacock that I had hooked is they don't ever give up. Like they're fighting all the way to the boat. Water temp is like 91 degrees. They don't care. They're fighting all the way to the boat. We get this fish netted in the boat and I'm holding it and it's like orange and green and with black spots and just crazy, crazy colors. Its eyeballs were like blood red. It's the craziest thing I've seen, you know, that's not something I get to see often, and having the opportunity to catch peacock bass, my first good peacock bass, uh, and to be that one, the first one out of the gates, feels pretty good. I mean, what's that growth right there? So they uh, store protein up there during mating season, so in case they need it for whatever reason. Damn. But this is a, a beautiful, very big male. When he and I first caught a couple fish, it seems like you know it turned on the other fish. And then it's bait after bait, fish after fish, and we really started dialing them in. We had these fish pretty fired up and catching them pretty regularly actually. We ended up with a double and we're high-fiving and having a great old time and I tell you at that point we looked at each other and it's like I think it's time. I think it's time to raise the bar a little bit. I talked to Johnny about bringing my fly rod, and I've always wanted to catch one on fly. Glad we started catching them on live bait first, but I brought my five weight, and I don't get to use that very often. He's like, I've got an area where it could be tricky, but there's some good ones there, and if you can get him to eat it, you're gonna be in for a show. We got back in this canal, and really Johnny jumped up on the pond platform and just ran the troll motor from there as we were just cruising by, really looking for a staged up fish. I'm used to double hauling, trying to lay the fly out 50, 60 feet, but really, these fish don't care that you're there. So in a lot of cases, I was zipping the fly 20, 30 feet on the outside, uh, just trying to get a reaction out of them. Uh, some had a couple of interests, but then they fade off, like almost like it wasn't moving enough. Uh, so it was a little tricky to kind of learn that, um, but we found two that we, we just stayed on. We had to stay on them. See him right there? Yep, he's on it. He's on it. Strip, strip, strip. You throw that fly right in their bed. You let it sink. And what they do is they open their mouth to suck in a gulp of water to blow, to blow that little piece of debris off of their bed. As soon as they suck in, you go for that hook set. I mean, and it's game on. Oh, 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 he wants it so much. Hooks it. Oh, yes. Oh my God. I freaking got it. <laughs> come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. I knew I saw him eat it. Let him run with it, let him run. Yep, oh yeah, you got him, you got him. That's a good fish for a five weight, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah. You stay out of their trolling motor now. Oh yeah. Jesus, God. <laughs> you got the uh, the alpha male in there, you know that, right? 
Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Holy smokes. Right there, Dude, right? That's freaking amazing. Right in the top of the mouth. I mean, do we not that? put 50 casts into that joker? I was gonna say 65, 70, but we'll go with 50. Oh. That's the biggest one of the day right there, too. It is. That's five pounds all day long right there. And on a five weight. Okay, well. We worked hard for that one right there. Dude, that's, I that's mean. That's about as good as it gets. I, I say we're as good as done. Absolutely awesome. If there's ever a case of being persistent and just, you know, staying <laughs> true, that's it, man. We worked hard for that one. What a hell of a day, man. Jeez. Got the fish to the boat. We're high five and super excited about what just happened. We're wrapping things up here. Resident comes down and we're thinking, oh boy, what's gonna happen? And the guy says, hey, nice work. I'm the mayor. And we looked at each other like, okay, I'm the sheriff. <laughs> I don't know. And then this guy says, no, I'm really the mayor. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> So we had to go over and say hello, thank you very much, we appreciate you letting us catch your fish right next to your dock, thank you, have a good day. When you have two guys that are very passionate about fishing and then completely dial their programs in, you know, if he came and fished with me, he would be leaning on me for you know, our area, or my area, but I'm coming to his world, and he really showed me a, a totally new look for me. Uh, knocked off a couple bucket lists, and I can't wait to come back, maybe without the cameras, just for a little fun time.